problem. <laughs> okay, well, welcome. We are recording, ladies, and I am so glad you're all here. And if you don't know, this is the Success Connect Mastermind launch, Wednesday, March 2nd at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Danielle, <laughs> on Zoom. And we're so glad you found us. Thank you very much. And um, our agenda today is, um, first of all, I just want to say welcome and thank you so much because there are so many things, there are so many things I want to get on the road here. I just want us to get this going because there's so many things to share and talk about. And probably if I if I um, am going to err on any on the side of anything, it's probably trying to share too much. So I will try to or too fast. Or <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> um, but I will do my best and I'll learn as we go along. And this is um, about sharing. So it's a mastermind group and we're going to get into it. I know Angie's been part of it in the past and, and Nicole and um, we started basically our mastermind right after um, COVID started. We had our first first mastermind and the group that was part of that um, just, I don't know, there's something really cool that happens. And we'll talk more about masterminding later, um, what that all means and what that means to you and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but there is, it literally, there's something that you just, I hope you're going to, you know, you'll start to feel and understand why this is different than a networking group. Yes. But our agenda is in front of us. So, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go right. Um, I'll just go over the agenda real quick. We're gonna talk about some things that are happening today and um, somebody's birthday. Who's today? Um, five things you may not know about that. We're gonna do some introductions of ourselves and each other. Well, you're not gonna have to introduce anybody other than yourself. The way I say that doesn't make sense. <laughs> not at this point. And then we're going to, we talk a lot about um, the success principles and there are fundamentals of the, the system to success, which is if you were in the webinars, um, we just talked about the success principles. There's actually 68 of them, but there's um, fundamental ones we're gonna go over. Um, and over the next so many months, so many weeks, we're going to cover not 68 of them, but we are going to cover a lot of the basic ones that you might not even realize are the principles. We're going to talk about principle number one, and then we're going to talk about relationship marketing. And you can read that, but you are you are the intersection of both of those. Um, and and then we'll kind of see where we are. Like you said, I think I'm probably over planning. Um, but I'd rather have too much and we'll pick it up where we leave off for next time. Um, but we are going to talk about what a mastermind is. Um, there's some interesting things we can talk about with success because success means different things to different people. And, um, and then what connection really, you know, what there's a definition of connection. <laughs> um, and I think without connection, we're going to be in big trouble if we think we can do it without it without do all these success things without connection you're you're kind of going to be up a crick I guess mm -hmm. um, I could tell you something that happened in our networking group we have a CPA this morning who said I'm he said something like being in up up to my I think he said he was up to his butt with the ASS word, but but with alligators because of the time of year it is for CPAs. Oh, okay. And I'm yeah. thinking, why do I say that? I would say if you do not have human connection with other people, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's in person, whatever, all this other stuff's just gonna be a mess. So we're going to get started and we're just gonna jump right in, really. Um, does anybody know whose birthday it is today? And it's nobody on the call. It's nobody on the call. So it's a him, by the way. Um, you don't know. Okay. I am actually going to give you a clue. <laughs> Linda, I didn't share this part with you, but I actually have this. I have no idea why Dr. Seuss. 
I have this because I use it for my, I've done some music programs where I must have talked about Dr. Seuss. I am not sure why. Because <laughs> I don't want one. Huh? I want uh, one. You want one? Oh. Yeah, as a, that's nice. As a I teacher, would, I love the I, I know. is in my head. <laughs> it is. It, and you know what? I found, I actually, I knew I had it. And then I won't tell you what I stuffed in the top so it would stick up. The other day, I actually watched, I think it was 2003, The Cat in the Hat with uh, Mike oh, okay. Mike Myers and Alec Baldwin. Well, it was weird as heck, though. I don't know if I even knew it was out there. But but anyway, Dr. Seuss. So we're going to talk about Dr. Seuss. And I am going to jump through. There might be some things that you don't know about Dr. Seuss that we're going to share today, just kind of to get us started. Um, and there we go. So I'm going to get rid of. So happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. And if you didn't know, it is also Read Across America Day, which I don't think, I don't believe, I think it started in the late 90s, but it's all about as many, you know, reading um, maybe somebody, Nicole, do you know what Read Across America Day is? I think you it's know, just I, I saw something on that. And how cool is that that it's the same day as his birthday? Yeah, I it's have a feeling of awareness, you yes. know, awareness and uh -huh. to encourage, you know, people to read. And what an honor, you know, oh, with yes. him. I do believe that it had something to do with that. I, I really do think it had oh, something think that to do with his birthday came first. <laughs> yes, his birthday. Well, that's birthday. that's my question for you. Yeah, Does like anybody that. know? Does anybody know what year he was born? Oh. No. You would have like, have no idea. He was born in 1904, March okay. 2nd, 1904. He would be, I mean, I put it on my calculator because I was like, it can't be. He would be 118 years old. Wow. If he were alive, he would be 118 <laughs> years old. Now, why does that matter? It probably doesn't matter at all. But if you ever hear about Dr. Seuss, um, we actually in our jumpstart program or our jump starters group, which Angie was part of that. And uh, Nicole, I don't think you were on that call. Um, but that was our, our mastermind until recently, we kind of combined it, but we learned some really interesting things about Dr. Seuss and mm -hmm. some of his stories that they share. Um, and I wanted to just give you some, some stuff about him that you might not know. Um, does any, I, I actually sent out a, um, uh, yesterday was the notes and concepts information. It's, it's concepts, info, and notes. So on there, it says whose birthday's today. You could fill that in, Dr. Seuss. How old would he be? He'd literally be 118. He would probably I can't imagine the oldest person on the planet I don't think is 118 so he would not be here um but I want to share some things does anybody know what his um name was what his real name was anybody know um Edward yep it was Theodore <laughs> that you were trying you were trying so it's Theodore Geis, I'm sorry, oh my goodness, Theodore Seuss Geisel, which um, his, his mother's maid, maiden name was the Seuss, which is S-E-U-S-S. -S. Uh -huh. And actually German, it's a German name. And in German, it actually sounds like voice. So it should be Seuss. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. Americans, the American, whatever, have have changed it. So now it's Dr. Seuss. Um, <gasps> and so you can. But that's what he I mean, that's how people knew who he was. Um, and I wanted to share a couple things more about him. Um, you probably both are both. All of you have probably seen a lot of his characters. And I just wanted to share some things. Um, in our Jumpstart group, we talked about Green Eggs and Ham. Okay. And Green Eggs and Ham was written in 1960. 
Um, I, I left you some spots there on your page if you wanted to write some things down about him. So I'm going to give you more than five things. I'll try to do it fairly quickly, but so we don't spend a lot of time. But I, I want, you know, there's so many unique things about him. Um, 1960s, 6D, sorry, Green Eggs and Ham was written. And it was written because he bet his publisher, or actually his publisher bet him $50 that he couldn't write a book um, for 50 with 50 words or less in it. Um, I actually have that information. I, I, I mean, it, it was a tough one for him to do. I actually have the 50 words in Green Eggs and Ham um, if anybody is interested in it, it's very small little words. And then it turned into a bestseller. Um, mm -hmm. even, even the idea that it was 50 words or less, he taught, and we talked about this in our jumpstart group. There's, mm -hmm. there's basically five things that some sales things that he taught. Number one is stay persistent. If you think about it, you go back and read Green Eggs and Ham. You don't give up. You, if you believe in what you're doing, and this, we could go back and I could read it, but it'd take us forever, and I'm not going to do that. But um, okay. if you believe in what you're selling, you're not going to give up. So you stay persistent. Um, you learn your customers' needs. This is number two. Um, you don't just offer the customer a product. You figure out what it is they're looking for. And then you, then you help them figure out how it answers that need, the, the, the thing they're looking for. So mm -hmm. learn your customer's needs. Number three, don't take rejection personally. Be polite and professional. <laughs> so even though Sam keeps saying, I do not like that, the, uh, the other guy, whatever the character is, I don't know, he... <laughs> Um, he, he doesn't take it personally. Sam actually does not take it personally. I'm sorry. Instead, he focuses on finding a way to help the prospect, showing him all the different ways in which the product can be used and enjoyed. Sam is a role model for the tough ego uh, required of sales of a sales representative. And it's, you know, easily wounded souls don't last in sales. I'm sure we can all agree. <laughs> That's a big deal. Um, and then adjust your goals. This is number four. Adjust your goals to the situation. Um, Sam just changes his course every time the guy says no, the character says no. And he just keeps trying them. And uh, try them, try them, and you may try them, and you may, I say. I mean, if you think about it, the, the book is pretty unbelievable. But, but in the end, number five is stay confident in the good of the product. I would definitely tell everybody, you know, we talked about it in all of our masterminds and most of our networking groups. If you don't believe in what you're selling, right. you know, then you need to find a new product, right? Or you need to figure out how you can be behind what it is you're selling. If you don't know that, if you don't have that confidence, then, um, you know, you, you're probably in the wrong place. But anyway, so those are the five for green eggs and ham. Um, okay. That's kind of an interesting. Now, a couple other things, and we're gonna we're gonna. There's so many things I want to cover today, so I don't want to lose lose track of any of our time. But okay, so some things I said on the the sheet, five things, but I've got a bunch. So if you want to just jot down, um, he got his sense of poetry from his mother. They called him Ted Geisel, and his mother spent most of her time singing, or um, she worked in a bakery. So there were rhymes that she memorized from her time working in her father's bakery. And that's where um, Dr. Seuss, or Ted, got his ideas for his rhyming. So um, if you can put that in the back of your mind, <laughs> that's one of the things <laughs> um and had never had any children of his own which is a really big deal if you think about 
the fact that all he did was write base. Now, he actually did some political writing and he did some, I even see in here where he wrote two adult books, one with new drawings even, um, which is pretty weird to think that Dr. Seuss did that. But the bulk of what he did was write for children. And at one time, um, he actually said, I, you make them, I'll amuse them, is what he said. <laughs> um, he did, his, his first wife, Helen, died by suicide in 1967. And Seuss eventually remarried Audrey Diamond, who had two daughters. So he had two stepdaughters in 1968 after um, his first wife died. Um, you might not know some of these. I just think some of these things are pretty interesting. The pen name Dr. Seuss began as a way to escape punishment in college. So you're probably going to say, what are you talking about? So in college, it was in the midst of the Prohibition era. This was 1925. And his he and his friends, Ted and his friends, were caught drinking gin in his Dartmouth um, dormitory dorm. And as punishment, Seuss was stripped of his editorship of the college's humor magazine, Jack-O-Lantern. <laughs> However... <laughs> He continued to publish work under a variety of pseudonyms, including T. Seuss. Um, several other, um, there were a lot of other names that he appeared under for other years, and he eventually shortened them all to Dr. Seuss. So that okay. was a big deal. Um, let's see. I would, in his books, he gifted the English language with the word nerd. <laughs> and redefined what a Grinch was. Uh -huh. So those are some interesting things. Let's see. Um, he was extremely successful before he wrote the children's books. Um, let me think if there's any other ones I wanted to share with you. Oh, and his first children's book was called, And to Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street, was his book. And he uh -huh. said, after, and this is, goes back to the whole idea, if you believe in something, do not give up. But after a 27th publisher rejected his first manuscript, Dr. Seuss walked dejectedly along the sidewalks of New York, planning to burn the book in his apartment incinerator. But on Madison Avenue, he bumped into Dartmouth friend, um, Mark McClintock, Pack, who that very morning had started a job as the editor in the Vanguard Press Children's section. And without, within hours, the men signed a contract in 1937, Vanguard Press published, and to think I saw it on Mulberry Street, which launched the extraordinary literary, literary career of Dr. Seuss. If I'd been going down the other side of Madison Avenue, I'd be in the dry cleaning business today, he later said. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so many other things about him. And I did give you some, some uh, spots there to write some of that notes down. I would encourage, I'm going to try to send you out a couple things prior to our meetings on Wednesday. Um, and just to get you thinking, I sent you out a couple things yesterday. And this um, homework, I call it homework. Um, we'll go over this stuff while we're meeting, but definitely if you want to write down some, some of those little notes, that would be good. Um, so I wanted to go next to, now this is what the pages look like that I sent you, and I stretched them out a little so you could see it. If for some reason you did not see it, this is page one and then page two. And I think I might have given you, I did give you a third page for notes. We may not get to all of this today, um, but I did want to, I, I think I over, <laughs> overly prepared, but I am very excited that we are going to now kind of turn the, um, the um, tables a little bit here. And I want the next block I had, there was some introductions and 
what I want you to do is spend probably about five minutes. If you've got that page, if you don't, that I sent out, it would be, um, it would look like this. So five things you don't know about Dr. Seuss. We're now on the introductions. I want you to think about yourself. And I want you to think of three things that are unique about yourself. Now, we just talked about Dr. Seuss. Why did I spend all that time? Because I could have just said to you, Dr. Seuss, you all know Dr. Seuss as a, as a literary figure. And, but some of those other things might have given you some other ideas and, and kind of created a different picture. What I'd like you to do is to take five minutes. Let's see what time is it. Take five minutes or so. We'll give it a good five minutes. Just think about three things about yourself that are not typical things that you would introduce yourself in a like a networking group. Um, I do. We're gonna we're going to take a little time and go around and and um, everybody can tell a little bit about themselves. And it'll literally be two minutes. But I want you in that two minutes. Tell us what you do and um, then tell us those three, if you can come up with three unique things about yourself, okay? So I am going to come back to this screen and so take some time. Does that all, anybody, everybody good? Maybe about one, one more minute. And if we don't need it, I'm happy to start, but I wanna make sure everybody feels comfy.
So I am, um, <laughs> wouldn't normally do this, but I'm going to start just to give you a couple ideas because I don't really want you to think, oh, she's going to hog the, she's going to do everything first. No, I'm not. But I want it to be kind of like um, three things I was thinking about when we did the mastermind, I think the first year, Angie, I think we did like, or did we, didn't we do something like two lies and a, no, two truths and a lie or something. I almost thought about doing that. And then I thought, no, we don't know each other. We'll do that in the future so that we can like get to know each other first before we start throwing out crazy stuff. So I don't know if you remember that, Angie, but we had some really crazy stuff we did. And I know Nicole was on that too, but, but so these are supposed to be truthful things about yourself. Now you don't have to share anything you don't want to. Um, believe me, um, but I am going to start because first of all, <laughs> for a very short, okay, these are true. For a very short time, I sang with the Moody Blues. Okay, let's go there. Number two, I was a quarter finalist in Ed McMahon's Next Big Star, which followed, what was it? Um, what was the one that he did on TV? Um, you know what I'm talking about? We did it when it was on the internet and I cannot think what it was. Goodness sake, it wasn't American Idol. That's what I got in my brain. It wasn't American Idol. Okay. I think we did with the sweepstakes. <laughs> oh, well. Was it solid gold? No, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about though. It was the, it was the, it was the, where the little, it was like the little kids or whatever and stuff. But, but then he, then he branched into the, the internet and this was, how many years ago? I don't even remember how many years ago, but we did this next big star. And I sang with another lady and we're still singing. Um, we're still singing together occasionally, but we were quarter finalists and it was an, it was the internet, man. We were really excited. Um, and it was, it, it was a whole new experience. We learned very quickly how the internet works. Um, and then I have twin girls who will act, who will be 30 at the end of this month. I cannot believe it. But they were two months early when they were born. They were never preemies though in my, I think they, but anyway, so those are three things. You know what I do. So I just wanted to throw those out there saying, yeah, they're bizarre, but maybe you have a better idea that my, my brain is kind of bizarre. My life has been weird, um, but it's been a good weird. So Linda, do you want to go next? Who wants to go next? You want to go, Lynn? You're good? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll jump in. Okay. Um, so a couple things about me. I am all about uh, bikes and boats. So I love to go on bike rides and love to uh, participate in, a, well, everything boating, but particularly dragon boating. And so if you haven't heard of dragon boating, it's kind of like a, a giant canoe. And if you Google it, you'll see all kinds of images, but we go to competitions and um, it's just a tremendous amount of fun. Do you see how her face lights up when she says that? I'm telling you. Okay, <laughs> keep talking, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's just, yeah. it's so much fun. Um, and I tend to, whatever I do, I tend to do um, full out. So when I'm working, I'm working full out. When I'm playing, full out. And so I, it's, it's good for me to have some hobbies that I really enjoy. Um, yeah. And, and so that's part of it. Um, on the work side, I was um, CEO of a mental health center and did some drug and alcohol work um, as a therapist. And while I was CEO, I became extremely... Um, exhausted and sacrificed my health some took me a couple years to get my health back under control because I stopped all the exercising and stopped taking care of myself um so really had to learn how to kind of get that back in balance because being CEO was just really really demanding yeah. at the time um and so it really taught me a lot about uh, it looked paying more attention to the things that I value health, nutrition, exercise, relationships with people. Um, and, and eventually led me into 
this whole arena that I'm in now of really paying attention to uh, socially conscious business ownership and uh, you know democracy and fair and just treatment of all people. All of these things are really important concepts in the business owners that I work with. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm selective about which business owners I help and they have to really resonate with me um, with some of those values in order for us to have a good relationship. And if that's not there, then it just doesn't work. So that's a bit about me. So I was going to ask her to make sure she told what you what she does, but she did. Um, so and thank you, Angie. That's a good suggestion. <laughs> Always text me, guys, if I'm doing the wrong thing. So Angie just su suggested I don't share the screen anymore. We'll go back to that. Um, who wants to go next? That was great, Linda. Thank you. I'll go if you want. Yeah, go for thank it. So I, I wrote, well, the first things, like the three truths about me, um, one of the things I love to do is I read the same books um, that my girls read in school. And I have done that forever um, because I, I thought that it would help with like comprehension because some of their books are way different than when I went to school. And, um, but gosh, my, I, I love to read, I love to write. Um, and, and it's just so amazing how truly what I learn about them, you know, um, like, for example, a recent book um, is called The Glass Castle, which is a true story. And um, just just about like a, a family like in poverty and, and just their hopes and dreams. And they, there's even a movie we found out when I got done with it first, because <laughs> Lady was like based in school. Um, there's a movie on Hulu. I bet we saw. I mean, how you know how you talk about how the universe talks to you? Where's chances of that? But um, just you know, so I'm like blessed in so many ways. I didn't realize all that I would get out of it. You know, my my desire was for my girls. So, but with that, it's our bond. It's really connected us. So I'm really thankful um, for that. Um, also, this this is super cool. I um oh okay, what's the name of the movie? Um, the Glass Castle. The, let me make sure that's what it. The Glass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and actually, it has. Uh, this is what the book looks like. But um, I'll put it in the in the chat. Um, it's got Naomi Watts in it with an interesting. Well, Naomi. Um, yes, yeah, same same name, same same name, and uh, it's got a really great cast. I really um and, but but I highly recommend read the book first read the book first there's a lot they leave out and oh, it's just goosebumps yeah. and just I cried I cried a lot of this what this family went through you you don't quite get that from the movie but they did a wonderful job um in the movie so thank you Andy yeah I hope um so um so the other thing too oh I got to help a friend um find a lost pet and so my friend Jan and uh, Jan uh, McDougall, that some of you all know, uh, probably a year ago in the winter time, I remember it was freezing. I had only recent, I've known each other maybe a year or so. And uh, so, but we've been on like Zooms and calls like this. And, uh, and she was just like, oh my gosh, my cat Tug got away he's my, you know, his family, it's, you know, all this. And, um, and I'm like, okay, let's figure it out, you know, and uh, Lainey, my youngest, she's 17. Now we jumped in the car, you know, you travel into the unknown, you know, she's like 20 minutes away. Um, and, you know, we're like, okay, where'd you last see him, you know, all this. And um, so we're looking around. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a friend that I met through Jennifer Networking, um, Catherine Baharis, I can't say it like that, but York, she um, has an amazing business. She's known as the crazy red haired lady. She's a medium. She's an animal whisperer. What on earth is that? Um, but it was really cool because I texted her. She, I remember she was at a show and I'm like, I don't want to bother you, you know, but is there any way? Oh, no, no, no. Send me, send me a picture. Give me the address. Um, and I mean, for like the next two hours, and I, I still get goosebumps. She was like, you know, she would be like, okay, go down two streets and look for kind of like a, a shed in the backyard. Um, there's like some kind of a half of a cement um, 
wall and then there's like some kind of a street light you know so I'm just going to fast forward okay so we didn't we didn't find him but we're looking around we're talking to people um I remember we get back to Jan's house which I've never been I've never been and we're just kind of Jan's like let's just look in the backyard you know so we look in the backyard and oh and tall grass is what she had said well there's there was a patch of tall grass she has a white shed Okay, and, and I remember there being like a space underneath it. And, you know, I'm like on my knees, I'm like tug. And of course, he's probably not going to come to me because he doesn't know me, right? And then she had behind the shed, she had half of a cement. <laughs> this is so funny, a brick thing, a brick wall that overlooked two apartments and a street light. Okay, this is no, Catherine's never been there. You know, this is, you know, this is like hours and, and stuff. Um, Unfortunately, we did not find him. We did not find him that night uh, or at that time, but it was like, maybe it was on 11 p.m. or something that she just uh, heard something. He was on the porch and he came in. And I mean, that is just, I still get goosebumps, things that, you know, who knew, you know, who knew? So um, just thankful. Um, and then the other thing, um, real quickly, I'm sorry, I know I'm talking a lot. Um, no. So <laughs> <That's> <laughs> fine. I have to say before I met Jennifer, um, well, not really met because we met like 13 years, it's been a while, but we would bump into things, uh, bump into each other at different places. But before I joined TTR Networking, I, was the person that like places I've worked, you know, we have the meetings and stuff. I'd be in the last seat. I'd be in the back. <laughs> I'd be in the back. You know, you can't see me. I'm here. I'll raise my hands. I'll do whatever you need. Um, so thank you to Jennifer and TTR and all our friends at TTR. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate y'all. But if we can back up like, I don't know, 25, <laughs> 25 years ago in college-ish, um, I had a speech class, you know, that speech class I'm talking about it, 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 uh, I was just like, man, you know, it's like one of those last classes you have to take. And I was like, oh, I don't want to take it. Um, but I can remember sitting in the class and on the first day in this wonderfully nice, older, nice looking gentleman walks in and I'll never forget this. He would do this every day. He would walk in with his crisp white shirt. He was like dressed up, dress pants, blazer. He would roll up his sleeves. Um, and he teach to us. And I mean, it was just, but he wasn't just anybody. He's, I believe he still is. And this is like 25 years ago, the lead sports person for um, the news station in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, oh, Fred wow. Cowgill. Fred Cowgill. Well, he was so nice. And cool. um, yeah, so just really, so just really, in, you know, inspired me and, you know, and again, me out of my shell, but still. <laughs> still and I didn't even... Class. I didn't even give her a chance. I threw her right to the wolves the minute she started working. Uh, join, That's uh, what I needed. That's what I, I never <laughs> knew. She never held, you know, she didn't hold on to like, you know, she wasn't I mean, like. I, some things I did. I mean, it was a tougher, you know, it, it depends where you're, where, where you are, your norm, you know, yeah. a lot of times, you know, like that one business thing. I mean, it was just like, it was, I maybe it was the vibe in the room. I don't know, but. <laughs> well, we're glad you found us. So. You, if you don't know, Nicole is a blogger. She is an appreciation advisor. She's my integrator. What the heck is that? We'll learn more about that. But she does. <laughs> if you see posts out on social media, probably Nicole for us. But so much cool. Thank you. So yeah, very good. So we still have time. Who is left? We've got half of a stunt. Who wants to jump up? There you go. Okay, I'll go. Hi guys, I'm Danielle Vallette. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> very pretty. Yeah. Nice so, to see you. Thank you for joining thank us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a ketogenic. I'm a ketogenic. I'm a ketogenic integrative health practitioner. So I'm certified in ketogenic uh, dieting, and I am also an integrative health practitioner. So I combine them both. Though, if you were to ask anybody, they don't go together. But I, I combined them both. I did that. So. <laughs> Um, a few things about me. <clears throat> well, the three. I, it was really funny because you said three and I said, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to think of anything. And then I wound up writing down like a lot. So <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So things that I would never really discuss in maybe a boardroom, I would say. Um, okay. So um, I worked in the school cafeterias since 
but I would say from seventh grade or so, all the way to college. Yes, all the way to college. And I got paid in food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if you've gone to college, you're the poor college student eating your ramen. And believe me, I was enjoying every bit of it. You know, and so it was never a freshman 15. It was like a sophomore 20. So there's that. And um, uh, let me see here. I, while I was in college, oh, let me back this up because it's actually kind of funny. I, the second thing is when I finished high school, because I finished school um, six months early so that way I can earn money so I can go to college because the college was not accredited. So I wasn't going to be able to get any funding. So, which is by the way, how I met Lori in that college. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I got into telemarketing for, um, uh, well, I got into telemarketing and that was my first real job. And in that first real job, I got fired for talking too much. So <laughs> in telemarketing? In telemarketing. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> oh, so in, in, in that case, I actually wound up getting signed. And this is the third thing. I wound I wound up in that with that last person getting signed for um as a Mary Kay independent beauty consultant. So I was 18 and I was like, and that was my first uh, groove into entrepreneurship. And I said, this is it, this is it. By by 19, I am gonna take over the world. <laughs> well, <laughs> but that's the, that's the three that I've got. Um, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed every bit of my Mary Kay journey all the way into, I, I think I was 30, Five. When did I move here? Wow, I didn't know that part. That's kind of an interesting connection, Angie. You, you'll, you guys will have to. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Oh and yeah. Then, yeah. Well, she'll, you'll, you'll hear her here in a minute. Uh, your last name is Valet. Valet. It's too. You're, you're saying it better than I can. Valet. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's like saying wallet, but wallet. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. I love that. I love that. Um, yes, and I don't mean to sound, I love that. I love that. I do love that. That's really beautiful. I love it. Um, why don't I, um, while we're thinking about it, I was just thinking if you haven't, please go. I don't think anybody has. Go ahead and put your, your contact information in the chat. We're not done with our introductions here, but... Um, either Angie or Margaret, you're not, you don't have to say much if you don't want, but if you want to share, we, we're, we're all here, ready to hear. So I, go. Go. I was kind of waiting because there's a lot of commotion going on at my house right now. <laughs> oh my, see, can you hear her back there? <laughs> so I have three fifth graders in the basement and the basement steps are right here. My 16 year old just got her license on Thursday and she's oh. headed to a job interview, but she's waiting by the front door because it's not time to leave yet. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's, I'm used to doing these calls when nobody's around. Like it's just me at the house. Everybody's at school and work. And so here I go. Everybody can hear what I'm saying. You're good. You're <laughs> so good. I actually went for things that you might not know about me, not necessarily the most common things, but I have four daughters. Most people's jaw hits the floor, but the most interesting <laughs> part is that they are 13 years between the youngest and the oldest. So I have a fifth grader, a sophomore in high school, a senior at Purdue who's graduating in May and a 24 year old who graduated already and has a full fledged engineering job. So I like to say I was teaching one to drive on the same day I was registering one for preschool. So yeah, that was interesting. Um, this has nothing to do with my life today, but I did play Sandy in Greece in my senior year in high school. And I never continued with singing after that. And before that I had never done any musicals. It was just show choir. It was all I did. So that was super fun. And, um, Nicole and Jennifer and Linda might already know this too. I am getting a pilot's license. I'm going to fly airplanes. So that's fun too. Isn't Just that fun facts. Fun? Um, yeah. I am a, a retired, well, stay home mom turned solopreneur with network marketing in skincare 
So we have a lot to talk about. I have been doing it for seven and a half years, but I changed two and a half years ago. I changed brands. Um, and my current company is called Ever Skincare and it's clean beauty. So I, most of what I try to provide is clean beauty education and um, clean beauty that actually is effective on all of the aging. And my birthday's Saturday and I'll be 51. <gasps> oh, so, I love that part. I didn't know that. I don't, I don't think I'd ever ask you how old you were, Angie. I don't think I would be that brave. No, you remember you last year though, because I did my 50th birthday. We did a ski trip to Colorado. Remember that? Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah, big deal. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, see, we're learning stuff. So Margaret, we saved the best for last, right? We need to take yourself off mute or we're not going to know anything you're saying. And I love to hear you talk. So there you go. <laughs> now, I always just say, I, there's nothing really exciting or anything different. I'm Margaret Broadus. I'm a registered nurse educator. I've done just about every kind of nursing you can think of. I went to nursing school at 17 and uh, I'm still nursing and I'm 77. Yeah. So with nursing, you can do anything. Uh, this, this last thing that I'm almost done with. I, I was, I retired about five times, but I, I like <laughs> teaching nursing. I really like it. Right before that, I was a school nurse for six years up until COVID. And I didn't go back after COVID because the parents are extremely challenging. Right. I'm and sure. I love, love the kids, love the kids. Uh, but the parents were challenging even before COVID. So I uh, didn't do that anymore. I, I love network marketing. I was introduced to it 20 years ago. And uh, I've met so many great people. That's what I like about it most of all. I, I, don't, I don't sell products, I do services. And so it's, it's uh, I, I just really enjoy it. When uh, Angie was talking about flying, I had to laugh because I think that's awesome. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when, when I was first introduced to my company, which is the same company, and uh, my upline person, he, he, he was a pilot. Well, he wasn't, he hadn't been a pilot for a long time, but he was learning how to do helicopters. And I was crazy enough to go up in the helicopter with him. <laughs> and so and I really, really enjoyed it. My family and friends couldn't believe that I did go, well, yeah, why would I? <laughs> because it was fun. It, it was fun. I was not scared at all. I guess it was just looking at the view is like, what is there to be scared of? So, and I, I, I'm the middle of three girls. So I do tend to be kind of a nonconformist at times. <laughs> Sometimes I'm doing things uh, years before anybody else would have done them. And so it's like, then they're done that. But that, that was just me. And, and I think it was just uh, my station in life. Yeah, because I was, I was the middle one. And you tell me I can't do it or you're crazy. Like people thought I was nuts. When I left my job as a nurse at General Motors, it's like, you're leaving that great job with stock options and all that. Like, what? That, that was not my thing. So I just, I never understand if people continue to do a job they hate. That makes no sense to me at all. I just can't imagine that. So I feel very blessed that I got into nursing where I never have to be burnt out. And I enjoy helping people. And so, you know, I, I do tend to migrate to groups and meet so many wonderful people. And uh, I'm kind of like my mom. We, we would join groups and not just be a joiner, but really, like uh, Linda was saying, I jump in with both feet. It, it's all or I'm not going to do it. Well, here you are. 
And we're so glad you're here. Well, yeah, there's so I, I'm I'm so glad to be a part of you all. Yeah, I, and you. I'm I'm a, I'm a mom. I've got a daughter, and I've got two grandsons, and there's ten years apart. Say, mom, <laughs> one is 27. He lives in Portland, <laughs> Oregon, and he he works for the Portland Trailblazers. He's in marketing and advertising for them. So he's doing really well and then the other one is seven just turned 17 he goes to cathedral does really really well academically and in football and basketball so i feel extremely blessed yeah yeah so yeah well there you go that's very okay so i hope margaret thank you for sharing that i margaret and i had a really i had i have conversations with most of our members and um we had a couple months ago and then she visited yeah. some of our groups and I'm like so yeah. glad she's a part of our network I'm just yeah. really glad to be able to say that um thank you so I hope that you took some notes on we have just a few more minutes we're not going to go past five unless we have to and we don't have to um but the idea today is definitely you know, you might say, Dr. Seuss, who cares? There are a lot of unique things and there are a lot of unique things about our group. And maybe if you know some things about each other that, you know, you might not pick up in normal conversation, it kind of gives you a different perspective. When Angie's always talked about four daughters and now she's a pilot or almost a pilot and all those yeah. kind of things, right. it's like, holy cow. I mean, it's just a different world. So yeah, I think, yeah it's wonderful that we share in here and um, what I do want to do really quick is go back really quick to this. I am saving the chat and I will send that out um, if so you can connect. I want people to be able to connect. We will have a, a group, a Facebook group, and you'll see me inviting you Um uh, I, I'm hoping to get that done in the next day or so. My husband has been sick on the couch all day and we were with family members that had stomach flu. So we're kind of waiting to see. But let me go real quick. I want to very quickly just come back here to this stop. That, I mean, we're going to share. This is the, we're not getting through everything. I do want to say very quickly that um, I'm going to try to find our, um, the next let's see <clears throat> we are going to be talking about in here we're going to pull out there are 68 success principles and um the one reason i called this success connect mastermind we are a mastermind group and it doesn't matter how many people if you know somebody out there that needs to be part of this um, they can join us at any time. I would just like their connection information so I can send them the right information to get signed up. But we are Success Connect Mastermind. The whole idea is we're going to combine the information from Jack Canfield's book. And um, we're going to talk about these fundamentals. And I'm going to do it as quickly as I can so that we can we can get out of here um, in five minutes. But I will do that. The fundamentals to success are um, from Jack Canfield. Basically, his whole um, idea is there's a system of success that works. But you have to work the system, OK? It's like knowing the combination to a lock. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, male or female, black or white, graduated college or not. Um, you have a high IQ or a low IQ. If you know the combination to the lock, the lock has to open. The problem is that sometimes we're missing some of the numbers. So you have the numbers in the wrong order. Um, but if you don't do the right combination in the right order, it doesn't matter how hard you work, the lock won't open. They are as we move forward, we're going to talk about the fundamentals and we're also going to be layering in the relationship marketing thing, um, the whole <laughs> concept of that. So what we're starting out with, I just wanna go through, I didn't number them because I want you to know these are the fundamentals. So we're gonna, we're going to over the next three months, um, we're going to be talking about these and there's so much here and Linda is going to be presenting on the 16th, two weeks from today, she's going to take it more down a business, we're talking about some of the, the you know, the 
what what did you call them, Linda? Like frou frou. No, you didn't call it frou frou. The, <laughs> the the warm feely kind of the relationship where mm -hmm. Linda's going to talk once a month anyway. Linda's going to help us with business things, um, business strategies, and and how that works. You know, and how do you how do you combine it all? I mean, there's fundamentals to success. My Big thing is that if you don't have human connection, doesn't matter. If you get all these other things, it's not going to work. But number one is take 100% responsibility for everything that you do. If you can take responsibility, then everything else will make sense. Act as if everything that you have in your path, you have, you are responsible or it doesn't matter if you, I don't mean to sound like it doesn't matter. It does matter if a bad thing happens, but you have to handle it. You know, be clear why you're here. We're going to talk about why are you here? Mm -hmm. When uh, Margaret said that, don't do something you don't enjoy. Why would you do something you don't enjoy? Decide what you want. Believe it's possible. Unleash the power of goal setting. Um, we're going to talk about that. Release the break. See what you want. Get what you see. Act as if there's so many interesting things that go under all these. Taking action. Um, why don't people take action? What's the problem? <laughs> Using feedback to your advantage. And number 53 in the success fundamentals are is practice uncommon appreciation. I included that because I believe <laughs> that if you start with that, if you believe from day one that you, you come from a place of gratitude and appreciation, everything else will fall into place. And we'll talk a lot more about that. Um, I just wanna say real quick, we have one minute, two minutes. You are 100% responsible for your life. The events that happen, you may not, you know, you may think, oh, I, you know, I mean, bad things happen, they do, but it's how we respond that equals the outcome. If something happens and you respond one way and the outcome isn't what you want, you have to respond a different way, right? E plus R equals O. So you have to change your response. We will talk more about that. Um, I sent you, and I'm gonna leave it right there. We have so many things we can do. Uh, but I sent you yesterday a, um, and this is for next week, but I wanna say really, really quick, Really, really, really quick. I sent you the E plus R equals L responsibility sentence stems demonstration. And then there was a worksheet that goes with it. And it talks about if we were just 5% more responsible for these different areas in our lives, what, would, what difference would it make? So the example says, um, gives you, the first one is 5% more responsible for your life and well being. And it gives examples like I would exercise 30% or I'm sorry, 30 minutes more a day, or I would eat only fast food one time a week. Um, I would med meditate more often. I would get more sleep. And then it gives you a, a page where you could do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. I would like everybody to take that and we will leave that at that point. I think that will be good. The other part of that is we were going to talk about, and we will, what is a mastermind? What is, what do you want to get out of this mastermind? So bring that next week in addition to the um, responsibility. And, you know, there's no right or wrong answer, people. <laughs> so don't, I don't, you know, ladies, I'm sorry, I don't want to say people. Um, there's no right or wrong, wrong answer. It, it's really going to depend on you. But what is a mastermind to you? We're going to talk a little bit about that. What do you want to get out of it? And then what does success mean to you? Okay, so that'll be next week. Um, anybody got any questions? And I'm at 501. Darn. Linda, I was trying. I was trying. You did well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It, we had a lot more. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. And you, you can see when we start sharing, um, uh -huh. and I really do, there are a number of people that have shown interest in this, and I, I want us to be a very tight-knit 
group, no matter how big we get, we may break, we'll break into smaller groups when we do that. But um, anyway, I just want to leave it with you. Um, if you have a question, I'm sticking around for a few more minutes anyway. If there's anything I can help you with, let me know. Linda presents on the 16th. Linda, do you know, have, have a title for your? Um, or do you tell me? Do I remember it? Um, I didn't mean to spring it on you. <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> so Linda is a business coach and she helps business and she talked a little bit about that. Um, <clears throat> but I think it's, she does, she does a bunch. Bye guys, have a great day. Um, Linda does a bunch. So she's going to do that on the 16th. And then the other thing is on the 30th, we have Larry Levine with Selling from the Heart that is going to be presenting during this time. Um, it happens to be the fifth Wednesday of the month. There you go. So, and I would tell you that if you want that book, go look it up. I mean, look, sellingfromtheheart.net is a website. Um, it's a podcast. It's a I, I found out you can go on the website, just request the book. He will autograph it and send it to you for free. So really, pay the money. Wow. I, and now if you find out anything different, let me know because I might have an inside scoop. I'm in his mastermind group. But the idea is he will talk about what a mastermind is on Wednesday, the 30th at four o'clock Eastern time. Danielle, sorry. But you know, if you're committed to being part of this, you should be on here. So hopefully you will you will join us. Um, and I guess, you know, I'll leave it at that. March is going to be over before we know it. And then we get into um, April is accountability. And there is no better thing than a mastermind into an accountability. Those are two of Jack Canfield's top things. And you can look up Jack Canfield but he is a renowned author, speaker. The success principles are one, but he did the chicken soup for the soul. And Angie's the one who always knows this, but he, he went to 144 publishers before he got it done. And he tells people, reject rejection. Don't give up if you believe in what you do. Right. And some will, some won't say next, go on to the next one, which if those of us in network marketing probably hear that a zillion times in trainings, right? I mean, that's what it is. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, everybody. You are awesome. And I'm going to send this, the chat out. I will also send out probably the link. I don't mean to say probably. I had some issues with downloading the last we are recording this and I will save it and send it out. And then we will have a Facebook group. And Danielle, I know you have so many things that you know about stuff like that. If you have any other suggestions, let me know. I mean, I know Nicole knows a lot of, but I don't. Jennifer, I was going to say, could you include the link for the Larry Levine website for the free book? Um, yes. You know, yes. or, you know, probably you've seen it just in case sometimes they change it, but you know, maybe. Good. It really, mean... it's a really good book. If you go and check out his, um, the, um, if you check out his podcast, um, there's just unbelievable people on there, but it is just all about, now he doesn't really tell the story in the beginning of the, you don't know this necessarily, but I think he was 50 years old and been in copier sales his whole life and got downsized, I think, and was kind of on, you know, trying to figure out what do I do with this experience that I've had and, and all these people and these great people. Bye, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Um, but, you know, what do you do with all these, these connections that he's made? And, and, um, and he just, the selling from the heart was kind of born out of that and then he's his partner is Daryl Amy who's got his own business um, and he helps businesses generate more revenue but the selling from the heart movement is unbelievable 
Um, and I found I met these guys a couple of years ago before pandemic, and then their um, their community has grown. And but he's just very very qualified. And I think recently I'll have to look and see. I think it was named like a top ten sales book of the year or something. So to get him to speak for us is he's a really so nice he's so nice. He's, he's just he's like very us nice. talking. You know, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, really cool. So if you, if you know any of this, the same, but it's sellingfromtheheart.net is the website site, and I'll double check with that. Um, a couple of years ago, I think the first year we did it, he spoke to our group, and I think I took, and I don't know, did I get it? Everybody got a book, I think, and then I yeah. autographed it. I think not. I did. He, he did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> He Nobody wants my autograph. What am I talking sure, about? Sure, put that in there too. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. But now I find out he does it. And then he just wants opportunities to speak to people. I mean, he just wants to be able to speak. So, um, you know, if you you connect with any of it, you know, it's and, and Jackie um, Joy has spoken to some of our networking groups. So you don't even have to be in the, and she's part of his team. So I, I didn't explain that part, but if you have any questions, Margaret, Danielle, we're so happy you were nice here. Nice to meet you, Danielle, and nice to see you, Margaret. So glad to be on. Yes, absolutely. So well, yeah. Thank you. I think we're going to have a lot of fun and just reach out to me if you have any questions. Obviously, this, this sheet had way more than we needed. So we will <laughs> pick up where we left off next week. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Bye. So good to Bye, see everybody. you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. I'm 